In this video, we're going to talk all about anonymous inner classes in Java and the question on everyone's mind, how they relate to Bigfoot. My name's John. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear and understandable way. So be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. All right, so anonymous inner classes. This is another one of those things in Java that just has a, a scary sounding, complicated sounding name. Anonymous inner classes. It sounds really hidden and shady and weird, but they're really not all that complicated, and they can be really useful and really cool to use. An anonymous inner class is a class with no name that you use to instantiate only one object ever. So whenever you use an anonymous inner class, you'll always be defining that class and instantiating the single object of that class at the same time in the same Java statement. This will become a whole lot clearer with an example. Your anonymous inner class can either extend any existing class or implement any existing interface. We'll start with the one that extends another class. So let's say we have this type um, animal and we want to create a new object of type animal. We'll just call it uh, my animal. So animal my animal equals new animal, just your basic constructor to create a new animal object, right? And if we hop over to this animal class, we can see that it just has one public method called make noise that just prints out yap yap yap. So of course, if we took this my animal object and called the make noise method on it, of course, it would just print out yap yap yap. What if we wanted to create a new type of animal object like a Bigfoot that there is only ever going to be exactly one instance of, and we want it to be able to make noise in a completely different way than a regular animal object? Well, we can use an anonymous inner class to create our Bigfoot. So here's how you do it. It starts out looking like any other constructor call animal Bigfoot equals new animal. However, if we leave it like this, we get a basic plain old animal object. If we wanted to find our own new type of animal here, we just have to put an open and close curly braces. And inside these curly braces are where we put our new classes definition. So what we're actually doing here is creating an anonymous subclass of the animal class and writing that class definition right here between these curly braces. So in the animal class, we have this make noise method, right? Well, as a part of this anonymous class definition, we can override this make noise method with our own implementation. Public void make noise. Now, of course, we want to have it make noise like a Bigfoot would. System dot out dot print line. <laughs> Perfect, sounds exactly like a Bigfoot. So now if we take this Bigfoot object and call make noise on it, this regular animal object, my animal, still says yap, 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 but our Bigfoot says <laughs> This is what anonymous inner classes allow you to do. They allow you to create an unnamed subclass of some other class like animal and create one single object of that anonymous class. So of course it makes sense to use an anonymous inner class to create a Bigfoot object. You know, a Bigfoot object is mysterious. You can't go around as a Bigfoot object with a big old, you know, class name of Bigfoot on your forehead. And you can only ever create one of them. We created this one-time use anonymous inner class uh, as a subclass of animal. So now later on down in the code, because this class that I made doesn't have a name, I can't just instantiate another object of that class. It's a one-time use class. I mentioned that there are two different ways to create an anonymous inner class, and one creates a subclass of an existing class like we did here. Another way is by implementing an interface. But the concept is the same. You create a one-time use class that implements an interface that you specify. One interface that you might be familiar with is the runnable interface. You use the runnable interface, especially when you want to create a multi-threaded program. By the way, click up here if you'd like a great video on how to use runnable to create a multi-threaded Java program. But usually when you want to use a runnable to create a multi-threaded Java program, you have to create a whole separate class file that implements the runnable interface. And then you can finally create an object of that type and get your new thread running. Instead, you can use an anonymous inner class to make it so much easier. To do that, we can say runnable, um, like uh, my anonymous runnable equals new runnable. Now, of course, Java is giving us an error here because we can't instantiate an interface. Runnable is an interface, it's not a class. So what we need to do is create an anonymous inner class here that implements the runnable interface. So we'll do the same thing we did above and put in our open and close curly braces. Now Java knows that we're trying to create an anonymous inner class that implements the runnable interface, and it suggests to us here that we need to add the unimplemented run method to properly implement that runnable interface. So let's click it and do it. When you implement the runnable interface, you have to add your own implementation of the run method. So that's all we have to do here. So we can do whatever we want. We can just have it print out, I'm an anonymous runnable. 
It's good practice to have this at override when you're either implementing an interface method or you're overriding a parent classes method. So we should probably also go back and add this uh, at override annotation to our make noise method because we're overriding the animal classes method here. But back to our runnable, it might look like here that we're creating a new object of a type runnable, but we're not. Remember, you can't create an object from an interface. You can only create it from a class. So even though it looks like we're creating an object of a type runnable, we're really creating an object of a class type that doesn't have a name that we're creating here. And that's the same up here. Bigfoot isn't technically an animal object. It doesn't have the type animal. Its type is this anonymous subclass of animal that doesn't have a name. But now we can take this my anonymous runnable object and call run on it if we want. Run that and we get our yap 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 from our animal, our from Bigfoot, and I'm an anonymous runnable from our anonymous runnable object. And again, check out that multi-threading video if you want to be able to use your anonymous runnable objects to create a multi-threaded Java program. So an anonymous inner class can be really useful if you want to create a subclass of some other class and you only ever need one object of the subclass that you're creating. Like we wanted to create Bigfoot as a new type of animal that makes noise in a different way, but we'll only ever need one Bigfoot. Or if you need a single object that implements an interface and you don't want to have to go and create a whole other class file to create the class that implements the interface. You can just do it right here in one single step statement and get the object that you need. If you like this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like. And if you'd like to do me a huge favor, you can do the YouTube trifecta of leaving a like, leaving a comment, and of course, hitting the subscribe button. You guys are doing all of that really does help the channel and get these videos out to help more people. So I really do appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>